Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raven Bushcraft. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, this week I'm going to talk a little around Goat Willow. Goat willow is a native tree species in the British Isles. However, unlike many of its close relatives in the willow family, it is not a water indicator. So ordinarily we would expect to find willows near water, be it a pond or a, a stream, sometimes even just boggy ground. So willow can be a very, very useful indicator to us for the presence of water if we need to go off and uh, source a water supply. That isn't the case with goat willow. Goat willow doesn't need to be near a water source. Um, it will grow anywhere as evidenced by the one here that I'm kind of stood amongst right now. There is no water around here and, and I know this from experience. I have dug many a ground well um, in this area and never had a, a drop in them. So remember willow generally is a water indicator, goat willow not so much. However that's not to say that it isn't a useful tree for us, in fact it is a very useful tree for us in bushcraft. Uh, so the first one uh, is that it has a painkiller effect, so willow or willows contain salicylic acid and if you ingest salicylic acid your body converts it into something that is aspirin um, and so how would you do that basically just chew on the ends of these little um, twigs and you'll taste the, the aspirin in there other than that uh, we have it's a useful wood for fiber friction so bow drilling uh, we could make a hearth board from it we could make a spindle from it uh, if we find a piece that's standing dead um, if we're able to find nice long kind of green shoots like this then we could potentially make a, a bow from it for the again for our, for our bow drilling. We can use the bark on this to make um, cordage. Come the spring it's going to produce catkins and those we can collect and use as a tinder. So for me, catkins, uh, they're in that kind of downy flower head grouping of tinders. And so my experience anyway, they are best used in a tinder bundle as, a, as an ember extender. But they do work really well for that task. Just moved myself across to a different um, goat willow so that we can look a little bit more around the, at the bark and the, the leaf of the tree. So this one is um, yeah, a more mature um, uh, a version, individual of, uh, of goat willow, as you can see. The bark on this main stem here, it is, it's fairly textured actually, there's a lot of fissuring going on with it. But what I'm, I'm particularly interested in here and showing you is on this somewhat smaller branch, uh, and I will bring the camera in a little closer in a minute so you can see this in more detail. But we have these diamond shapes going along the um, bark here. The very, very distinct um, diamond shapes on it. Now, just one quick word of caution on this. Sometimes white beam can also have that uh, same little diamond pattern going on it. So just be aware of that. that um, it's not necessarily the, the defining characteristic of it. Um, we'll look at the leaf in a bit. That is, the, the leaf on a white beam and a goat willow are quite different. But this, these little diamond shapes all the way along there, really good identification feature. So we have these very distinct diamond shapes along the bark which is a big giveaway that we're looking at a goat willow. And with the same tree, I've just moved myself a, a little bit here so that we can be in a position where I can 
Um, just look at the leaves in a little more detail. So the leaf on goat willow, and I'll again I'll come in and take a, a closer shot in a second. The leaf, if we think of it in terms of how long it is compared to how wide it is, well it's probably about twice as long as it is across. The big kind of identifying feature on this however, if we look at the end of it, if we look at the tip of the leaf, it looks as if someone has come along and just kind of squeezed it between their finger and thumb and put a crimp in the end of it. So it, the tip of the leaf kind of on one side definitely kind of comes downwards so it's very much as if it's had this squash going on. The bud, so this is very typical with willow buds, the buds are laid flat against the stem so that the buds are flat against the twig there. As I say that is a common feature within, um, within the willow family. So leaf twice as long as it is across crimped on the end, the bud laid flat against the twig. So there's the leaf in uh, a little bit of close-up and hopefully as you can see we have this very very distinct crimp on the end of the leaf so it's as if someone has come along and just kind of squashed it at that point and left that shape in there. So here we can now see the bud and as I said the, the bud is laid flat against the stem of our twig. I hope that uh, that knowledge is something that you're able to, 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 to take use of um, and take with you on your own bushcraft adventures. I will try to get some more content out next week. Uh, I may not be able to. I've got a uh, five day survival course running and um, so I may not have the, the opportunity but I shall try my best um, if not it'll be the week after so in the meantime guys just to make sure that you don't miss out please subscribe to our YouTube channel or our blog um, in the meantime take care stay safe <laughs>